Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. Dun 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 no. dun. No. Nope. Just this stop. This is a sham. Welcome to DBL. I'm in for Jeff today, who went yeah. to Justin yeah. Bieber. <laughs> you know, I kept getting introduced. Now I can introduce myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lindsay, and I'm back in the building. Yes, you are. <laughs> so Jeff went to Justin Bieber last night, yes. and I know he's probably recovering right he's now. He's probably waking up right now. Right like now. He slept all day. <laughs> I love yeah. it. So hey, Jeff. So <laughs> let's get right into Kanye and Kim, because I know that we haven't talked about them enough. Instagram is banning Kanye West. Finally, the social media app slapped the rapper with a 24-hour timeout. They said he violated their policies against hate speech, harassment, and bullying. If Kanye continues to violate the policies, the company said they will take additional steps to limit harassment on their platform. So there's a lot of feelings about this. Some people are like, there's people who have way more, way worse hate speech. He did say some offensive things to Trevor Noah, but I want to start with Erica. What do you think about this? I mean, he did go pretty far this week. Yeah, you know, uh, Kanye is in this unique role where he doesn't have to be accountable to much. And therefore, there has to be some type of um, consistency when it comes to how we're going about making these bans on these social media networks. Now we can think of a few people who are have permanent bans, um, people who have been <laughs> banned or shadow banned, so does, or what people call shadow bans, and really that's a violation of X amount of times. So Kanye went above and beyond, and I think this is the appropriate action. It's seriously 24 hours, people. He probably needs it for his own mental health. Tori's a super free speech person, though, so this is kind of infringing on his free speech, especially for me, the offensive part is when there's like white supremacists that have active free reign on Facebook. Mm. Totally. I think what's interesting is the harassment aspect. Remember, this is a private company and they can have their own moral clauses. And I think he's violated those. It's not exactly free speech, but it's like harassment and stalking and all of those. They have their own limits and that is allowed to be prohibited in terms of a private company. I thought what Trevor Noah said about this situation was so interesting. He said, if Kim Kardashian, one of the richest and most influential living uh, women living currently can't get her emotionally manipulative ex-husband to leave her alone, what honest chance does a normal woman have? Right. And we always say, why doesn't she leave? Even Kim can't really get out of this. Well, and she has every resource. Well, and Trevor every also resource. has the personal experience with his mom. That's right. You know, so That's right. that That's adds right. to it. I want to get Al's expertise about this. Well, not expertise. Oh, yes. You don't have expertise I, in this yeah, area. Like, but don't set me up I want to get, I wanna get <laughs> your opinion about this. So we're going to move on to more news about Kanye's ex, Kim. So she opened up to Ellen recently about Pete Davidson's many tattoos. Take a look. The Kim one isn't a tattoo. It's actually a branding, like a branding. I think my favorite one, it says here, it says my girl is a lawyer. Because, let me explain it, because he wanted to do something that was really different. When you different. say branding, so like literally like an iron thing yes. went onto his body yes. to brand Kim. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you, you are a brand. <laughs> So who knew that the Kim tattoo was actually a brand? I think that that is a little crazy, but I'm gonna let Al take it away. I, mean, <laughs> I hope it, you don't have a defense for this, but I don't know. Anybody that went to a black college, you're familiar with this, and a lot of uh, fraternities, they, when you once you cross over, you are branded. So really? Yes. Yeah, so oh, I've seen I didn't this know that. with a cattle prod, like for real. And so yes, and uh, it's it's bad. Anyway, I digress. I think the, let's get to the thing that concerns me. Would this be okay if he wasn't famous? What if you guys went on a six date, six good dates with a guy and he branded your name on his body? Would that be concerning? I understand <laughs> that it's considered romantic when it's famous. Who people, says it's romantic? But a lot of people like like love their love. Name but I one will, person who thinks this is a good idea. I, I, I don't know the 500,000 likes underneath their pictures. I, I, think I, I think this is, I think you heard the audience and that's an Ellen represents a lot of like middle America. The audience was not, was very uncomfortable with. It's, it's a strange a, thing. Yeah. Do you think it's a, now you can't leave? No, I don't. I don't. Well, well what first are you doing with that Kim name branding. on you? Yeah, but <laughs> I don't. Honestly, I I know that it might seem extreme to people, but when you were talking about like HBCUs and fraternities, it's part of tradition. So, I I don't see it as being like extreme. I think that there are different ways that people choose to celebrate and people choose to um, be like forever eternalized, like together. Um, this kind of makes sense to me. I know I sound crazy to a lot of people. <laughs> I'm trying but to figure out where this is going. 
<laughs> it, it makes it kind of makes sense to me because Pete has had a history of tattoos all throughout his life and they all symbol symbolize things even like the you know little quirky ones when he was much younger and if you're gonna put people's names which he has some other girlfriends and stuff like that isn't Kim kind of at the pinnacle like <laughs> isn't she the one where it's like well <laughs> I'm at the summit some people look at the tattoos like a story a reminder of what space you were in in that time of life so I was yes, looking at it like the movie memento <laughs> after that you just you keep their name in your phone and you keep it moving I also thought he was getting rid of the tattoos or many of them so this is interesting that he chose to br like maybe really this is the first one he's gotten since he feels healthy yeah interesting. I, I hope for him maybe you know? yeah yeah, I, I would probably, that would be the end for me if somebody yeah. branded Now, is this him. putting pressure on Colin to get <laughs> Absolutely not. Colin, please don't. I'm good. You wouldn't? But speaking of significant others, we're going to move All on because right. I'm done with that conversation. <laughs> so, would you have dated your significant other in high school? Well, Scarlett Johansson certainly has the answer. Take a look. I don't think so. No. <laughs> no. Firstly, that I, my brother had that same haircut uh, throughout the night. Both of my brothers and I just can't. So but with that <laughs> mullet that she rocked during her teens, she we think cool. that she might have a little, been a little unfair to Colin. What do you guys think? I mean, everybody looks a little doofy in high school. How did you Tori guys look? Something I, thought, I thought she looked really cool in that. She, Tori has all these high school glamour shots. I don't understand who your photographer was no. at that time <laughs> in your life. Sears. No, Scar Joe looked good. Sears, Sears. No, so Scarlett Johansson, I thought, looked cool with the mullet. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. I was getting like 86 Berlin vibes For from her. sure. All right, yeah. we're going to do what you guys look like in high school. Let's start with Al. Okay. Oh, why do you have to start with Come on, okay. Al. All right, let's do it. I know this is side by side. It's probably. Okay, oh, that, wow. Look at you. Whoa, Al. You that, look great. You was the hot oh tamale. God. Yeah, right. Hot tamale. Rocking that uh, <laughs> Allen Iverson jersey. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and throwback jerseys were the thing. No, you no, that was a current. Yeah, oh, I was my like, bad. throwback. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, next up is Erica. <laughs> Oh, I love it. All right, Erica, let's see. Oh, my oh. God, you're so cute. Oh, my goodness. Hi, baby, Erica. You look so innocent. Oh. Erica, that, that, that could be, that picture could be taken in the 60s. So, Anthony yes. would have, yes. so, like, old school. Would Anthony bag that, that Erica up? Uh, it, he do we sick. have a picture of Anthony from high school? Oh, I don't know. I'm just wondering. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Tori, let's do Tori, yours. Tori, let's see. <laughs> Tori said she. That, you look, look at exactly that. Oh, you look at that Ew. wave thing that you always want in the front of your hair. Like that's like a perfect. <laughs> and you look like your mama. Really? Yeah, you yes, do. I can see her face in your face. Aww. Absolutely. You know that was in Seventeen magazine. That's wow. number seventeen. Wait, yeah, that of course. Was? Yeah. yeah, it was like camp best friends forever, and I was in. I want really? seventeen. Yeah. I want to see Lindsay before we run yes, out. Of time. Oh absolutely. man. Okay. Should I look straight here? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> Should I do back the swoop? I oh dear, I thought it was Aaliyah. You know. Oh, it was a time in my God, life. So cute. Oh, Alan, would you still have me at that time? I don't know. Could you have seen, like, could you see through that, the eye? No, it wasn't the seeing no. point. It was the fashion. It, was it, was the, fashion. it didn't matter to me about that seeing. That was all yeah. Aaliyah. Oh, all right. Man. Coming up on DBL, Hollywood medium Tyler Henry. Oh. Okay, get rid of the picture. We're no. moving on. We'll find, out the we'll find out the celebrity reading that surprised him the most. And Netflix is cracking down on password sharing. The fee that you could be charged for giving someone else your login. Closed captioning provided by Poshmark. Now Talking about, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's so interesting. You, uh, first of all, you guys were so cute, it like hurt. But like your Aaliyah look, it was so interesting. <laughs> I was in a coffee shop a couple of days ago and I heard them playing Aaliyah. I loved Aaliyah. And it's so interesting to see her music coming back now 25 years later. I think in the last year, it just got approval to be on some of the streaming platforms. And maybe that that's right? what it mm -hmm. is. And I, and I asked a young woman working if she knew who it was and she knew who Aaliyah was. And I just, it's interesting because her career was so stunted mm -hmm. because of her uh, premature demise. So and it's you like, saw her like this as she yeah. passed away. Yeah. yeah it was like and it's weird that she died. In a fl like yeah. flying. Uh, yeah, it was such a weird. I know. Yeah, it was that's... so weird. How young was she? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, she was super young. I was like, is it the? Oh, let's look. Did you guys have any celebrities that you were trying to look like? Oh, man. Um, Jennifer Aniston every single really? day. Yeah. Oh, I could oh, yeah. see that. Like... I was like legit trying to look totally like totally the Rachel. <laughs> I don't know if I was trying to look like someone, but I would get so excited when people told me I look like Rudy Huxtable. Oh, that's cute. 
I would just I love that. About? I'm talking about because there's certain comparisons that I can't stand. Like somebody says something, I'm like, what? Wait, like, who, who, who are you trying to look like? Were you, besides Lily, uh, like was that your look? No, that, for was, your no, that was the only years? thing. Only don't even like. Didn't she even died at 22. Wow. Really? That's what I said. She was a comparison thing. Um, when I started, I just started TikTok not that long ago, and somebody reposted a post of mine. Sorry, and uh, the guy goes, "Oh my God, I always wanted to know what happened to Laura Winslow," and I was oh. like, "Yo, oh, stop it." <laughs> Family matters. I could see that. Family like, matters. Hilarious. That is hilarious. Family matters. I'm surprised okay. you didn't get my Gabrielle union. Yeah, I would have immediately done Gabrielle union. A hundred percent agree. Oh yeah, bring it when bring it on came out. Like, that's that's like all you. I wanted the Gabrielle union reference. Yeah. Oh, you didn't have anybody? Five dollars. Oh, there you go. All right. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs>so do you share your netflix password with friends many people do which is why the streaming service is cracking down they're testing out a new feature that would allow people to allow you to add people to your account from outside your household but for an additional fee oh. so far it's just in costa rica peru and chile but netflix isn't ruling out bringing the feature to other countries coming to a place near you so netflix says password sharing is impacting its ability to invest in new tv shows and films and i love to give creators they're just doing their money but I also share like 20 accounts. So Do this is going to really, really hit me. Really? Michael. Yes, I have my little brother's Netflix. I'm sure I make more money than my little brother, but yeah. so, some part of me just can't buy the Netflix. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just being honest. I, <laughs> what about y'all? I, guys, I just feel like the artist has to get paid. And I agree. this is a lot of, it's, a, it, it's, Everybody I know shares passwords and it has for a long time. And I can't imagine that, you know, everybody's like, oh, Netflix has money. Like, you, they're also paying a lot of money as well. So I just, I feel like this has to happen one way or the other. Sorry, Costa Rica and, and Chile have to be the, the guinea pigs Yeah, why were they the guinea pigs? <laughs> but honestly, it's something has to be done. Other subscription services have done it. And there's more competition now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I agree with you, Al. I know that people are going to be all in their feelings about this. I personally don't share my my Netflix password because I have to call my husband anytime I get logged out of anything because I don't know the passwords to any of the television <laughs> subscriptions or streaming services. But in terms of paying the artists, People have to remember, too, that Netflix is also creating platforms for new stories to be told. These are people who were not greenlit, projects that were not greenlit in any other platform. So if you think of the cost of Netflix per month, it's less than what you would pay per person to go to an actual movie theater. One time. And some, right, exactly. And some of those um, projects, some of those movies are actually being held to the highest acclaim. They're winning major pictures, awards. Yeah, yeah. So it's about time that Netflix does something. All right, here's the thing though. And I do have to say I we will research here from 2020 to 2021 Netflix dropped 20%, which is stock, their stock. Their stock, which is crazy because it's during the pandemic when everybody was watching right. Netflix. So that's first off wow. maybe the motive behind all this. Mm -hmm. But here's what I think. The problem is the culture of Netflix is very like word of mouthy. It's very like water cooler. You guys are all right. I know I'm everybody wrong. Everybody says like, "Oh, you have to watch this." Yeah, show you have to watch this. You have to watch this. And with that comes like, "Oh, take my password share this and even the Netflix like Twitter handle is kind of the sassy kind of like we know you're sharing so the switch is going to make people annoyed I, I think this but the culture of Netflix really was an organic growth that came from that I get you guys it's stealing I totally get it <laughs> you both but you all are stealing right. aside like, like sexy stealing right. like what are you talking you're, about you're right but I still think it's that's okay where if it you say I get it it's like I get it I took your yeah. car all right yeah. you get your point <laughs> well, <laughs> Let me, right. let me use your Netflix one more time before they do this yeah, rule, okay? I do think the culture is what's the shock will change. Agreed. You all are right. People still going to watch Netflix. They just going to pay for it. Okay. Yeah. Coming up on DBL, the amazing Hollywood medium, Tyler Henry. He tells us all about his new TV show. It's next. so good, you guys. I feel young. A month has passed since American professional basketball player Brittany Griner was detained in Russia for allegedly having vape cartridges containing oil derived from cannabis. Many people on social media questioned why Griner was in Russia to begin with. 
In addition to being one of the top players in the WNBA, Griner also plays professional basketball in Russia. A post on Facebook speculates as to why Griner plays in both countries, claiming top-tier WNBA players like Griner only make $20 an hour. But is that true? Let's verify. Our sources are the WNBA, WNBA's 2020 to 2027 collective bargaining agreement, and SpotRack.com. To answer that question, we're going to have to do some math. According to the WNBA collective bargaining agreement, the max base salary that a player could receive during the 2021 season was $221,450. According to SpotRack.com, Griner was one of seven players to make the league's max salary. Based on a standard 52-week year working 40 hours a week, Griner's hourly rate would be $106.47. The WNBA season, however, is much shorter, making Griner's hourly rate even higher. Verify also did the math for lower paid players. According to the WNBA, in 2021, the average salary for a WNBA player was $130,000. Using the 52-week year baseline, even players making the league's average salary made significantly more than $20 an hour. So we can verify that top-tier WNBA players do not only make $20 an hour, they make more. Griner does, however, make more money playing abroad than she does playing in the WNBA. As a member of a professional basketball team in Russia, Griner makes about $1 million per season. That's nearly five times more than she makes each year in the WNBA. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Welcome back. His psychic readings of celebrities rocketed him to fame. And now he is the most sought after psychic medium in the world. Earlier, we spoke with Tyler Henry. Take a look. Hi, Tyler. Okay, so we're going to get to your new Netflix show. We're all excited about it. Life After Death with Tyler Henry. But first, before you became famous, you were studying to be a hospice nurse. As a medium, was that a challenging environment to be in? I can't even imagine. Well, you know, it was a natural synergy. I graduated high school at the age of 16, and at that point I knew I had this ability, but I didn't know if I wanted to be a medium in the public eye, so I felt the hospice would be kind of a natural route to go, but I very shortly thereafter actually ran into the dean of my college, who I had actually read, and he encouraged me to go down that path instead, as I could really achieve the same thing I wanted to uh, with, through hospice with readings. What have you learned about life from talking to the departed? Sure. You know, I've learned so much. It's it put such an emphasis on the importance of saying it while we still have the chance. So many people that come to me come to me with regret, wishing that they could have said something or done something differently. Uh, you work with a lot of celebrities. Now, I know there's got to be one that stands out as like the most surprising. Like, who was it and why? I would say LaToya Jackson was one of the most stunning for me because obviously I recognized her and obviously I knew who she was hoping to hear from, which as a medium is a challenge because I had to be able to connect to details that weren't public, weren't discussed in books, weren't on interviews, connecting with Michael Jackson, the human being versus Michael Jackson, the superstar. Wow. Wow. Did anyone ever compare you to uh, Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell? Because I've gotten Zach Morris and I get Macaulay Culkin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, I was just on Netflix and your new show popped up. I'm like, Safe by the Bell's coming out with a new show. I thought you were Zach. I thought you were Zach, Zach is Morris. A medium in this one. Yeah, <laughs> it's the hair. Oh. Very handsome man. So let's talk about your new show, Life After Death, with Tyler Henry, not Zach Morris. We really <laughs> want to know about your technique, Tyler. So are you really writing things down when you're scribbling on those notepads, or is that just to pretend like you know what's going on? <laughs> uh, it's really a way to kind of turn on. So scribbling is really just a process that I've trained myself. Think of it kind of like doodling. It allows so that when I'm not scribbling, I can maintain some sense of normalcy. And then when I am, it's time to work. Tyler, when, when you're around people or even like when you're interviewing us, do you have to shut down certain premonitions or thoughts? That's a good question. Certainly things can come through. I liken it more to a volume dial in the sense that there's always background noise. And when I do an interview, I have to kind of turn that background noise down. But when I go to a reading, I can kind of consciously turn it up through scribbling, through focus. And that's really how I do what I do. Okay, so Tyler, why is this new show that we're all excited about a personal journey for you? She could have had a completely different life and that was taken from her by this criminal. I know I'm not like her. 
I know I'm a good person. This is really a personal journey because not only do you see these stories of everyday people and extreme resilience, but I also got to explore a family mystery, which to put it bluntly, uh, was intense. We discovered a few years ago that who my mother thought were her biological parents were not. And indeed, my mom had actually been stolen as a baby. Wow. And the woman that took her went on to commit a number of homicides, as well as many other uh, very painful things. And so the show really is about discovery, identity, trying to find the answers. That is fascinating. I, I wanted to you, ask Tyler. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it, go ahead. Uh, I think we all want to ask this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tyler, Do you I, hear anything about us? Because we're talking so, so <laughs> much him, about other him. people. But like, I wanted to say, like, what, what do you do to, to like, kind of, uh, you know, make sure that Tyler's okay? Well, I have to have a strong support system. And I mean, I, there's definitely been times where in readings I've said things that were tough. I think we can think back to my reading with Alan Thick. I don't know if you're familiar with that. But I sat with him, relayed a very significant heart condition, and then he passed away tragically about three months after of that very thing. So sometimes you got to talk about the tough stuff as a way to be preventative, as a way of empowering a person. But it's definitely a, a difficult job in some ways. Wow. Thank you so much, Tyler, for chatting with us. And for everyone at home, check out Life After Death with Tyler Henry streaming right now on Netflix. Thanks, Tyler. Thank we'll be right you. back. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Promotional Consideration is brought to you by Help. Some social media users have claimed Ukraine is working on biological weapons near Russian borders in labs funded by the United States. Most notably, a spokeswoman for Russia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs alleged on March 8th that Ukraine has been concealing traces of a military biological program supported by funding from the U.S. Department of Defense. A Verify viewer texted the team with questions about these claims. So let's verify. Is the United States funding biological weapons labs in Ukraine? Our sources are the U.S. Department of Defense, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, and European Union spokesperson Peter Stano. During a press conference on March 9th, Pentagon Press Secretary John Kirby responded to questions about biological weapons labs in Ukraine. We are not, not developing biological or chemical weapons inside Ukraine. It's not happening. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki also said Russia's claims are false. In another tweet, she added, quote, the United States is in full compliance with its obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention and the Biological Weapons Convention and does not develop or possess such weapons anywhere, unquote. The Biological Weapons Convention is a United Nations treaty. It effectively prohibits the development, production, acquisition, transfer, stockpiling, and use of biological and toxin weapons. As members of the UN, both the US and Ukraine must abide by this treaty. Peter Stano, a spokesperson for the European Union, says there's no evidence that there are biological weapons laboratories anywhere in Ukraine. In a statement to Verify, he said, quote, We are not aware of any programs in Ukrainian laboratories that are not in line with the Biological Weapons Convention, unquote. So we can verify, no, the United States is not funding biological weapons labs in Ukraine. So where could this claim be coming from? One source might be the Biological Threat Reduction Program. Since 2005, the U.S. has invested $200 million in Ukraine through the Biological Threat Reduction Program, which has helped improve Ukraine's biological safety, security, and surveillance for both human and animal health. These public health laboratories are run by Ukraine's government and don't make weapons. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytil. As the crisis in Ukraine continues, social media feeds have flooded with QR codes that send you to links to support Ukraine. But how do you know which ones are legit? Let's verify. You don't want to be just scanning any QR code in this case. Our sources are Kelsey Coleman from the Better Business Bureau, the Federal Trade Commission, and the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Here at the Better Business Bureau, we know that scammers follow the trends. They're seeing that QR codes are popping up. Um, they're they're easy to use. People can easily just grab their phone. Um, but what scammers love about them is that they hide the actual URL that they're directing the consumer to. Um, and that's a problem because we are always urging people to make sure that that URL is legitimate. And it's hard to do when you're using a QR code. Coleman went on to say your best bet is to go directly to the source's website and look for the warning signs, spelling mistakes, error messages, and pop-ups. The FTC also issued some tips on giving to Ukraine and says, look at the fees and the timing, especially if you're donating through social media. And the FBI says, don't download a QR scanner app because most phones have one built in through the camera. And don't make payments through a site you got from a QR code. Donate directly on the website.
you know what day it is. It's Thursday, and that means Tori, it's time for Sweet Sweet, sweet Deals. <laughs> It's time to shop for your favorite stuff. So get your phones out and get ready to scan because we've got some deals that are great just for you. Good job, Liz. All right, Steph, what do you have for us today? First up, we've got Santana OEA Premium over ear wireless headphones with active noise canceling. Ooh. So this deal includes one pair of headphones. So these are studio quality and noise canceling. They're Bluetooth compatible and super comfortable. Yeah. So normally these are $100, mm. but we've got them for only 29, saving everyone at home up to 71%. <laughs> okay, what about this, Tori? All right, let we've see. got these super cute, Ooh. super flattering, gorgeous form Shadow Sport 7 eighth high-waisted two pocket leggings nice these are gorgeous so the deal includes one pair of leggings and they're available in six colors Ooh. from size small to extra large nice normally they're 68 dollars i know but we've got them for 19. yes <laughs> Savings are 72% on this deal. We've got the Infini Sonic Therapy Chin Device. Oh, I need this. So the deal includes one device, so you can get a spa-like treatment from the comfort of your own home at a fraction of the price. Look Whoa. at this, the infrared radiation rejuvenates your skin, helps reduce wrinkles and fine lines. I'll take three. So normally, for a, this is $299. Never mind. <laughs> But we've got it toy for $79, saving everyone at home 74%. And last but certainly not least, we've got Nanette Lepore Halsey Multi-Section Crossbody. Oh, so the cute. deal includes one crossbody. And you know I love vegan leather and yes. this bag has it. So normally this bag is $78. It's a little pricey. But we've got it for $20. Oh my gosh. gosh! No, it's saving everyone at home 74%. Head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices. You can even visit MorningSave.com right on your smartphone or scan that QR code on screen. Thanks so much, Steph. Gotta love those sweet, sweet deals. Mm -hmm. They <laughs> I, are sweet. But, but I have a question about, go, go back to Netflix really quick. Like, what if you're in the same household and like you travel, like Colin travels for work sometimes. Like we need to still not pay that $3 fee and know that we're sharing legally. And so far, Netflix has been quite mum on if you travel, what you do with that. They have yet to say. And they also are saying, they're, they're a little bit quiet on the details of it all. So we're a little bit yeah, confused. Yeah, because they don't want y'all stealers to get ahead. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I, and to me, I'm quite offended that they tested it out on Chile and a couple other places. Peru like, and Costa Rica. Yeah, how do you decide who to test it out on? It might be due to population and subscription. In America, it's just rampant with thieves. <laughs> oh, man. DBL's new every day. Erica ain't having it. We'll be back tomorrow. I same am. time, same place. <laughs> I